Once again, we bring you the thrilling adventures of The Shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. The Shadow, mysterious character who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Several years ago in the Orient, Cranston learnt a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama... The Juggernaut. Our story begins as Ulysses Grant, world-famous automobile engineer and inventor, admits two visitors to his home. My name is Frederick Butler, Mr. Grant, and this is my associate, John Gibbons. Ah, uh, yes. I believe I've heard of you two gentlemen. Oh, what can I do for you? We've come to talk business, Mr. Grant. We want to buy the designs to your new invention, the Juggernaut. The Juggernaut? What do you know about it? As much as anybody does, perhaps a little more. We know that the Juggernaut is a new post-war automobile that will revolutionize the whole industry. We know that your designs are ready and that you are preparing to build it in a secret workshop. Well, Mr. Gibbons, so far you know only what has been published in the newspapers. Very true. But we also know that Eric Logan, your protege, is the only other man to share the secret of the juggernaut, and that he is going to help you build the car. Where did you find that out? Oh, we have our sources, Mr. Grant. Uh, but to return to our proposition, we are prepared to pay you very well for those designs. Mm, how much is very well, Mr. Butler? 150,000. Hmm. That's a lot of money. But the answer is no. But, Mr. Grant... The answer is still no. Those designs are not for sale. But, sir, you're being unreasonable. Do you think that I'd sell the juggernaut to you, too, so that you could create a monopoly and line your pockets with money? No, gentlemen. I have other plans. When the juggernaut is finally ready... It will be released on a low-cost basis for the benefit of everybody. Mr. Grant, for the last time, you'd better take our offer. And for the last time, Mr. Butler, I am not interested. Very well. But we warn you, Mr. Grant, you'll regret this. There are other ways of doing business. <laughs> Logan? Eric Logan? Yes. I'm Frederick Butler. This is Mr. Gibbons. Oh, yes. You phoned me. Uh, come in, won't you? Who is it, Eric? Oh, uh, Barbara, this is Mr. Butler. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? How do, you do? How do, you do? Now, gentlemen, what can I do for you? <clears throat> well, uh, we are here on a confidential matter. Oh, I'll go, Eric. Oh, no, Barbara, stay. I have no secrets from my wife, Mr. Butler. Very well. Well, here's how things stand, Logan. We know that you're working with old Ulysses Grant on the juggernaut. Uh, no? But how? It is our business to know. We want you to sell us the juggernaut designs, Logan. The designs? Hmm? But, gentlemen, I can't do that. The juggernaut's the property of Mr. Grant. We'll pay you 150000 for them. 150000 I... Well, that's a lot of money, gentlemen. Enough to make you comfortable for life. Well, Logan? I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I can't sell you those designs. Don't be a fool, I Logan. can't violate Mr. Grant's confidence in me for any amount of money. Logan, you're making a terrible mistake. And gentlemen, my husband is right. He can't sell those designs. I feel just as he does. I see. Look here, Logan. Let me put this another way. Suppose Ulysses Grant should die. What? I don't understand. That would leave you the sole possessor of the juggernaut designs. 
And you'd no longer have any moral obligations to Mr. Grant. Would you sell then, Logan? <laughs> I, I don't know. I hadn't thought about it. What makes you think Ulysses Grant might die? Old men often die, Logan. It's a law of nature. Well, we must say good day. Oh, if you change your mind, our offer still holds good. Barbara. Yes, dear? You didn't really mind my turning down that offer, did you? Mind? Why, no. I was proud of you. That money would have made us financially independent, Barbara. But I just couldn't cheat Mr. Grant. Not after all he's done for us. For my career. Well, of course you couldn't, Eric. And that's one reason why I love you. You're so loyal. If you had taken that money, it would have been tainted. We could never spend a penny of it. With a clear conscience. Hello? Oh, hello, Eric. This is the Ulysses Grant. Oh, hello, Mr. Grant. Uh, can you come over to my house immediately? Of course. But what's the matter? Well, I hate to call you at night like this, but I've got a special problem concerning the juggernaut transmission. I I'd like to discuss it with you. All right, sir. Uh, are you all alone? Yes. I sent all the servants out. Don't want anyone spying on us. Uh, get over here soon, will you, son? Of course. I'll start right away. Well, Eric, you certainly got over here in double quick time. Hello, uh, Mr. Grant. Oh, come on in. Take off your coat and hat. I've been thinking over that transmission problem, and I, I think I've finally ironed it out. Oh, that's fine, Mr. Grant. Uh, yes, I... Oh! oh. oh. Extra, extra sensational Ulysses Grant murder trial instant day. Jury's verdict awaited. Will Logan hang... Extra, extra, read all about it. Lamont, you've hardly touched your food. Yes, I know. I'm not hungry. Thinking about Eric Logan? Yes. Margo, I'm sure he hasn't a hope. It certainly looks that way. You know, I just can't believe that Eric killed Ulysses Grant. I've known him for years. And, well, it just doesn't make sense. You know, the kind of fellow he is, Margot, an idealist, a true scientist, completely wrapped up in his work. Yes, and he worshipped the ground Ulysses Grant walked on. Well, hey, Margot, when you stop to analyze it, all the evidence against Eric was purely circumstantial. The whole case hinged on the testimony of Butler and Gibbons, those industrial promoters. Yes, that's right. Their testimony was pretty damaging. Yes, they're a pair of shrewd customers, Margot. And they said that they had heard Eric boast that he'd be the sole possessor of the juggernaut plans if Grant died, why... Come on. What is it, Margot? Speak of the devil. Or rather, devils. Hmm? Hmm. Butler and Gibbons. They're coming over this way to our table. I wonder what they want. Mr. Cranston? Miss Lane? Yes? I'm Frederick. Yes, I know. We saw you at the trial. Oh, Yes, yes, a very unfortunate case. Very. I feel sorry for young Logan. I uh, bet. What is that, Miss Lane? Uh, oh, nothing, nothing. Uh, mind if we sit down, Cranston? Well, uh, there are two chairs here. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Cranston, of course you realize that Eric Logan is almost certain to be hanged. Yes, thanks to you two gentlemen. Now, look here. Uh, careful, John. This is no time to lose your temper. Uh, Mr. Cranston, you were, uh, you are a close friend of Eric Logan, are you not? Yes. And naturally you'd do anything you could for him. Naturally. Isn't it a little late for that, Mr. Butler? Oh, no, not exactly. Eric Logan's beyond help, I'm afraid, but, uh, there's his wife. Barbara? Well, what about her? She needs money, Mr. Cranston. When, uh, if, uh, Logan dies, uh, he leave her practically destitute. Now look here, gentlemen. What are you driving at? Just this. Eric Logan is the only man who knows the whereabouts of the juggernaut designs. You're quite sure of that, Mr. Butler? Positive. They were not found in Grant's house, safe deposit vault, 
or among his other personal effects. But we know that they exist, and that Logan has them. The point is this, Mr. Cranston. When Logan dies, the secret of the juggernaut will die with him. Unless, uh... Unless what, Mr. Gibbons? Unless he passes them on to someone else. I see. Now we see exactly what this is leading up to. In short, Mr. Cranston, we're prepared to pay heavily for those designs. A loss of the juggernaut, a real mechanical miracle, would be, would be a catastrophe to the world. That's very altruistic of you, Mr. Gibbons. But I have a practical sort of a mind. Where exactly do I fit into this scheme of things? I'll answer that, Cranston. We think you could persuade Eric Logan to part with those designs on the basis of your personal friendship with him. And turn them over to you, is that right? That's right. When he does, we'll deposit a certified check in Barbara Logan's name for 250000 That's a lot of money. As you say, Miss Lane, it is a lot of money. And what do I get out of this, Mr. Gibbons? Well, we're willing to pay you a very handsome commission, Mr. Cranston. 50000 Well, the answer is no. I should think so. Very well. We'll raise it to 100000 Now, look, gentlemen. I don't like you, and I don't like your proposition. And I'm not in the habit of making a profit by trading on a friend's life. Cranston, I've had enough, partner. Now take your partner and get out. Order! Order! This is it, Lamont. Yes. The defendant will rise. Lamont, it's awful. Eric's so pale. Look at his eyes. Prisoner at the bar, you have been judged guilty of a crime of murder by your fellow citizens, and it now becomes my duty to pronounce upon you the sentence imposed by law. I sentence you, Eric Logan, to the extreme penalty. You shall be taken back to the place whence you came, thence to the place of execution, where you shall be hanged by the neck until you are dead. And may God have mercy upon you. No! No! I didn't do that, did you? You're executing an innocent man! It was Butler and Gibbons! They murdered Ulysses Brown! I tell you they did it! And someday they'll pay for their crime! I'll come back from the grave and avenge your man, my gentleman! I... listening for the thrilling climax to tonight's shadow story. But first, your announcer. And now, back to the shadow. It is just a year since Eric Logan made his sensational escape from the courtroom. Now we find Lamont and Margot with Commissioner Weston at police headquarters. You know, Commissioner, I'll never forget the way Logan plunged through that window. How he managed to survive, that's a mystery to me. Well, it was the act of a desperate man, Miss Lane. Luckily for him, the courtroom was on the ground floor and that window faced the side lawn. I still don't see how he got through your police cordon, Weston. Well, neither do I. Neither do the newspapers. They've been pretty critical. Oh, you don't have to remind me of that, Miss Lane. And critical isn't the word for it. They've been downright insulting. Did you see that editorial in this morning's press? What are the police doing about Eric Logan? Ah, confidentially, Weston, um, what are you doing? Oh, so you too, eh? Oh, no, Commissioner. It isn't enough that every parish pump politician, every newspaper in town go out of their way to attack me. Now my own friends start Commissioner, started. we're just a little curious, that's all. Well, we thought that perhaps you had closed the case. I never close a case, Cranston. And what's more, I'll let you in on a little secret. Yes? I expect to have something concrete on this Logan mystery any day now. You do? I do. How? Well... Have you ever heard of the expression, Chesil Oh, definitely, Commissioner. Well, Barbara Logan disappeared two days ago. What? Certainly, Miss Weston. Absolutely. 
I've had my best men watching every move lately. Forty-eight hours ago, she gave him the slip on the Underground Railway. Mm, that rather complicates matters, Weston. Now you've got two people to look for. Wherever they are, they're together, Cranston. If we find one, we'll find them both. You think Barbara Logan's gone to join her husband? I don't think, Miss Lane. I know. And I can prove it. Yes, Commissioner. Sergeant, will you come into my office and bring that dictaphone playback machine with you? Right away, sir. What's all this about, Weston? Sounds very mysterious, Commissioner. One of my men planted a dictaphone in the ceiling of Mrs. Logan's flat just above the telephone. We got a record of her last phone conversation the night she disappeared. Oh, Sergeant. Here. Just set up the playback machine on the table, will you? Uh, yes, sir. Handle it carefully. Well, one thing, Weston, you've certainly been on your toes. Oh, thanks, Cranston. Ready, Commissioner. All right, good. Well, you can start it up now. Now, listen to this, the both of you. when you said you'd come back from the grave. And you say you're finished, Juggernaut? Yes. Yes, of course, Eric. I'll come at once. Hey, that's all there is, Commissioner. All right. Well, Cranston? Very interesting. Very. So he said he's come back from the grave, eh? I wonder what he meant by that, Lamont. I wonder. What we do know is that Logan is still about and his wife... Ma- oh, excuse me. Weston speaking. Who? Frederick Butler. All right, send him in. Well, I wonder what he wants. Probably the shirt off your back, Commissioner. Yes, and with interest. Commissioner Weston, I need your help. You've got to protect me. What are you talking about, Butler? Protect you from whom? Eric Logan. Logan? Yes, he just called me. Threatened to kill me tonight. I, I came right down my car. Now look here, Butler. Did your partner, John Gibbons, get the same kind of phone call? I, I, I don't know. I dissolved partnership with Gibbons. We are no longer in business together. All I know is that Logan has threatened to kill me. Well, in a way, you can't blame him. He's already been convicted of murder, and he has nothing to lose. Yes. Yes, I I never thought of that. Look, if I said that Gibbons and I worked out the story between us, testified falsely... That would be perjury, Butler. It's perjury or death, Butler. I... It's, it's true. Gibbons and I, all our testimony was false. Look here, Commissioner. You've got to contact Logan somehow. Now, just a moment, Butler. Calm yourself. But I tell you, Logan will stop at nothing. He... We'll do everything possible to ensure your personal safety. You just get into your car and drive back home. Alone? But, Commissioner... Don't right. you worry. You won't be alone. Mr. Cranston, Miss Lane and myself will be in a police car right behind you. Mm, this is a pretty lonely road, Commissioner. Especially at night. As the old saying goes, it's a nice place for a murder. Well, I wouldn't worry about it, Miss Lane. There's Butler's tail light up ahead there. I've already sent every police car in the area up to his place. If Logan gets through this cordon, he'll either have to be Eudini or the Shadow. Commissioner, listen. Yes. Julia? I wonder what that is. Sounds like some kind of rocket. Coming towards us. Getting closer. The motor. What are those lights that just went on? Well, they seem to be headlights. And they're blinding. They're coming right at us. There's a black shape behind those headlights. It's coming down the road at terrific speed. Come on. It's heading straight to Freddy Butler's car. Ah! Driver, driver, pull to the side of the road. Look out. Ah! Oh, Lamont. That ugly black shape, it, it smashed Butler's car to bits as though it were an eggshell. Yes, my girl. He never had a chance. Tired, Margo? A little. I'll take you home. What you need is some sleep. I don't think I'll ever be able to sleep. Come on, what we saw tonight it was, it was something monstrous. More than that, Margo. It was almost fantastic, incredible. That shape came along the road like a, like, like a bullet. Smashed Butler's car like a battering ram and was off into the night. It didn't even slow up. Lamont, what do you think it was? I think we saw the juggernaut, Margo. Then you think that Logan... Yes, he promised to kill Butler, and Butler died. 
Margot. Yes. Did you notice the direction in which the juggernaut headed after it smashed Butler's car? Uh, I think it went to the right, down River Road. Yes, and River Road is a dead end. There's nothing on that road between the point of the murder and the river itself, except Haven Cemetery. Haven Cemetery? Well, what about it? Remember what Eric Logan told his wife over the phone? Yes, he said something about being at the secret workshop, that he'd come back from the grave to... What? Back from the grave? Yes. And it so happens that Ulysses Grant's mausoleum is located in Haven Cemetery, Margot. Then... Then it might be the, the secret workshop. The only thing to do is to go there and find out. Well, here we are, Margot. Now, have you any idea where Ulysses Grant's mausoleum is? Not the slightest. Oh, this ought to be interesting. There must be a hundred mausoleums here, and none of them listed in the phone book. Margot, I've got an idea. It will save us a lot of time. What is it? You read the inscriptions on the tombs on the left side of the road. I'll take those on the right. You mean separate? Yes. Oh. But, Margot, you're not afraid, are you? Because if you are, we'll stay together. Be afraid? <laughs> no, of course not, Lamont. Why, reading those inscriptions will be just like browsing through the library. I've always been interested in the dead languages anyway. Mr. Grant could have done was to leave his forwarding address. This is worse than flat hunting. Oh, well, let's have a look at this one. Looking for someone? Yeah, well, Don't yeah. move or I'll kill you. All right. Now turn around slowly so that I can see your face. What? Why, it's Margot Lane. Eric! You alone? No, Lamont's around somewhere. Listen, Miss Lane. I know you don't understand what this is all about, but I've got to talk to someone. Here, let's go inside. You mean inside the mausoleum? Yes. Oh, but how can we... There's a button hidden in this stone wall. As you see, it opens a wide door. Wide enough for the juggernaut to get through. Juggernaut? Yes, I've just finished it. This was my secret workshop, Ulysses Grant's tomb. Now it's the juggernaut's garage. Mr. Grant and I planned it this way, in case he died. Only I was left to continue the great work. No one would ever think of looking for me here. But come in, Miss Lane. Eric, is that you? Yes, Barbara. I've got someone with me. Someone with you, but who? Oh, Miss Lane. Yes. What are you doing here? How did you know where to find us? Well, it's a long story, Mrs. Logan. I never mind about that. Here, come and look at the juggernaut, Miss Lane. Wait till I remove the tarpaulin cover. Oh. How do you like it? Well, I don't know. It looks so strange. Perhaps it does. But in the future, the streets will be crowded with juggernauts, Miss Lane. You see, it's completely accident-proof. You save countless lives. Now lost two automobile accidents. Come on, Barbara. You too, Miss Lane. They're going for a drive. Where? I'm going to drive it to the city, to the Science Institute, and turn it over to the authorities there. You can't, Eric. You're wanted for murder. They'll arrest you. Send you to the gallows. I'll have to risk that, Barbara. This is the moment I've been waiting for. To bring this car to the whole world. My work is finished. So are you, you idealistic fool. Oh, but... What? What? You... You killed him. Yes. But why? Why? Never mind about that. Get him the juggernaut. No. No, you better miss Lane for your own good. I'm warning you. There. I knew you would listen to reason. Where are we going? You're going for a ride, Miss Lane. Your last ride. And I've got a date with John Gibbon. John Gibbon? Yes, signed a living adjustment for Of 500,000. Just think of it. Half a million. And all mine. So that's why you killed your husband. Yes, said it was a fool. A fortune stood in his grasp. If Ulysses Grant was removed. So you killed Ulysses Grant, eh, Mrs. Logan? What's that? I heard a voice. 
<laughs> yes, Barbara Logan, you heard a voice. The voice of the shadow. Shadow, you can't prove a thing. But I can. I saw you murder your husband. And it was you, Barbara Logan, who murdered Ulysses Grant in conspiracy with Buckler and Gibbons. You thought that with your husband facing a murder charge, he would sell the secret for your sake. No, Shadow. It's not true. Yes, Mrs. Logan. You were ready to send your husband to the gallows for the money that Gibbons and Butler promised to pay you. But your little scheme didn't work, did it? No. No, it didn't. Was it you who was driving the juggernaut earlier this evening, Mr. Logan? Did you kill Frederick Butler? Yes, I tried to persuade my husband to kill him. To revenge himself. But it went as far as to call Butler, but he wouldn't go through with it. Why did you murder Butler? Because Gibbons offered me 500,000 for the juggernaut. Butler wouldn't agree to that. They caught so you killed Butler to get the 500,000 instead of a smaller sum? Yes. The juggernaut was worth it. It still is. And I'm not going to give it up without a fight. Drop that gun. Drop that gun, Mr. Logan. Look out, Mussain. <laughs> Mussain, are you all right? Yes. Yes, the car swerved. He missed me. Shadow, he's heading right for that crowd of people. I'm sorry I have to do this. All right, Miss Lane. You won't bother us anymore. I'll take the wheel. Oh, Margo, I just phoned Weston's office. They found Gibbons dead. He shot himself. Mark, did you ever see such a crowd? Yes. Reminds me of the Underground Railway at about five o'clock. That juggernaut is certainly an attraction. Incidentally, Lamont... Just how did the shadow get into the juggernaut? Unfortunately, you hesitated after Mrs. Logan opened the car door, which gave the shadow the opportunity of getting in before you did. I don't think I was ever more glad to know that the shadow was with me. Mrs. Logan would have stopped at nothing. But now she must pay the penalty for her crimes, just as Butler and Gibbons did. In a moment, we'll tell you something more of The Shadow. But first, your announcer. Next week, same time, same station, once again we bring you The Shadow. Be sure to listen. This feature is produced by Reg Johnston for Grace Gibson Radio Productions, a masterpiece of suspense.